Hi, my name is Dr. Wendy Wagner, and I'm going to talk today about HPV. Uh, HPV is human papillomavirus, um, and it's kind of a difficult thing to explain, and so I thought I'd try to shed some light on it. Um, human papillomavirus is a virus that acts like many other viruses in that you can have an infection, it can be dormant, it can come back again, um, and it does many different things in the body. There are hundreds of subtypes of HPV, and the ones that we are most concerned about or are the most common, types one and two are the type that give you uh, warts um, on your hands and feet. So um, people get warts, they take care of them very easily, that's a different subtype of HPV. Type six and 11 will give you genital warts. Um, they can be either on men or women. Um, they're easily treated, but they can come back because, again, viruses can uh, reactivate in your body. The most concerning are types 16, 18, and 45. Um, these are high-risk HPV types, and they can cause um, abnormal PAPs and uh, cervical cancer. So an abnormal PAP, if uh, it if you let it go and it's untreated, can lead to cervical cancer. Um, so, many years ago, we did not know that abnormal pap smear, cervical cancer, that kind of thing, uh, came from HPV. Now we know that every type of cervical cancer, every abnormal pap smear that we see is due to human papillomavirus. So, it makes sense that what we've started to do is along with doing the pap smear and looking at the cells, we also test for human papillomavirus. So people may get a result of a pap smear saying the cells are normal but you have a positive HPV or the cells are slightly abnormal and you have a positive HPV. This causes a lot of concern and all of that because it's a sexually transmitted disease and people are very confused about it. So a couple of quick things. One is we're certainly not worried about this at all, okay? What we do get concerned about is uh, the genital warts and the, and the high risk HPV. So when we test for HPV, we're testing for the subtypes of HPV. So if a pap smear comes back with a positive HPV, it's put into two groups, into a high risk group and then all the rest. Okay, so the only ones we worry about is all the rest. Most people have had HPV. So right across the board, if you get a positive HPV result, I can tell you that 80% of the population who's been sexually active either has or has had HPV. So if we tested everybody all the time, everybody would come up positive. So you don't need to worry about it like a lot of other STDs. It's just so common that you pretty much can't avoid it. A couple of other things about it is how it's passed. So we know that it's sexually transmitted. Um, we know that condoms can help stop the transmission, but not 100%. Women are affected by all these subtypes. Men can be affected with 6 and 11 because they can also get genital warts. However, they cannot be affected by these other uh, subgroups that cause abnormal pap smears. And that's part of the issue. Men can't be tested for the high-risk types, and nor can they be treated for the high-risk types. So men can be carriers, but they don't know that they're carriers. So anytime a woman is sexually active um, with a man, they could be a carrier, they don't know they're a carrier, and that's why it's so, so, so common. The other thing that you need to know about HPV is that your body can quote unquote clear it or it can become dormant. So once you have a positive HPV, it doesn't mean for the rest of your life this is going to affect you. It means that it could be tested again next year and you could be negative. You could be tested three years from now and you could be positive again, but you, your body can clear it. And the best way to have your body clear it is to be as healthy as possible. So the next thing we should talk about is the Gardasil vaccine. The goal of the Gardasil vaccine is to protect against the nine most common and most worrisome HPV types. Um, and the goal of the, the Gardasil vaccine is to get it before becoming sexually active so that you know that your body hasn't seen any of these HPV types and it protects about, 90, about 99 percent against these types so it really can uh, stop you from getting abnormal pap smears and consequently cervical cancer. Um, like we talked about before, 6 and 11 are the subtypes that cause genital warts 
and 60 and 18, and also sometimes we talk about 45, are the most high risk. They cause they they are responsible for over 80 percent of of, abnormal, of cervical cancer, I should say. So getting this is really important. Um, there's minimal side effects, but getting it can really protect a person against the subtypes of HPV. Now it also makes sense to get it after you've become sexually active, even after you've had a positive HPV test, because you may have one of these subtypes, but then it can protect you against the remainder of the subtypes. So it always makes sense to get it, um, even if you're positive, even if you're older, even if you've already become sexually active. Um, hopefully that sheds a little light on HPV.